What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverState.com, and welcome to the most hypocritical video I will ever make. Because today, we are going to be talking about sleep, which is something that I don't really do, and I'm not bragging about it, I'm not proud of it, it's just something because of the diseases that I have, that I am not able to do very well, and it's been a problem since my childhood, and I'm going to get very much into that whole story later in the video, but right now, uh, everyone here watching this knows that sleep affects your progress in the gym, your progress with your body composition, your progress with anything training related. In fact, I put something out new on Instagram this time for this video specifically, just asking some questions about your sleep habits, your sleep patterns, what you guys are doing, what you guys aren't doing. Because when I'm gonna make a video about sleep, there's so much information out there about sleep that's all the normal junk that everyone's supposed to do and everyone's supposed to have. However, it's gonna be different for a training group and especially a training group that follows me. Like, if you follow me, that means you're interested in a certain type of training and I want to make my videos as poignant as possible to the people watching it. So what I did was on my Instagram on the story, I just did a bunch of polls and I'm gonna be throwing those up here as I just talk a little bit about this. But just off the very first one, 93% of you know that getting enough sleep is going to help your training, yet a lot of you still don't do it. Guilty. But sleep is often the first thing to get pushed away. We choose a screen over sleep, we choose talking to people over sleep, we choose a lot of things over getting enough sleep but the truth of the matter is that maybe not getting enough sleep affects you tomorrow or the next day or the next day, but sleep is very much like a fire extinguisher. You don't really know that you need it until you do. Now, of course, there have been many videos made about this topic, and if you guys wanna check those out, feel free, because I'm not gonna cover a lot of the same stuff. A lot of people will tell you that the sleep definitely negatively affects your both physical and mental capability in the gym, and I'm not disagreeing with that whatsoever, but I'm gonna talk about the physical for just a second. I will say that you do tend to get fatigued a little bit faster if you're going a little bit of sleep. However, when someone walks into the gym and they say, man, I didn't get any sleep last night, that's why my lift sucks, that's not true at all. Physical, physically, you can push through no sleep for quite a while before it really starts to affect kind of your physical output, like drastically. Just look at anyone going through any type of special operations, type of selection courses, and those types of things. You will see people do superhuman things that should not be physically possible, however, they are. The thing that makes the difference in all of that, which is what they're actually trying to weed out, is the mental side, and that is where you're having problems in the gym. It is not about that you can't physically get there, but you did not get enough sleep, so your mind is not in a good place. Your body will respond, trust me. If someone breaks through that door and holds a knife to your throat, you're going to be able to react just as powerfully, just as explosively. You're not gonna be like, bro, wait a second, man. Like, I only got like four hours of sleep last night. You know what I mean? The real problem that is happening, and the same reason why so many people cannot make it through a special operation selection is because their mind starts to give up, right? When you don't get sleep, your mind starts to make bad decisions. It makes a bigger deal out of small things. It just doesn't make logical choices. And in the gym, you're just not able to kind of turn on that switch, like have that intensity, have that focus. It all just seems like it doesn't really matter as much. You can't get your just juices going. That is why you're not performing as well. So it's my opinion that when it comes to short-term sleep deprivation and its effects on training, I don't really like to look at the physical. I like to look at the mental and figure out different ways that I can switch my brain over because my body will always follow my brain. Now, I'm not saying that there are not big physical problems when you are in especially long-term sleep deprivation. You're gonna look at things like your body can't even digest correctly, so it's gonna up your inflammation markers, it's gonna screw all that up. Your hormones get incredibly messed up. Things like cortisol and ghrelin, ghrelin, ghrelin? Can't remember how to say it now. I didn't sleep enough. But even small changes in those two hormones alone can affect how much body fat you're losing. It can also change your appetite. So if you have a bad night's sleep, a lot of times you'll wake up and you'll be craving like donuts in the morning or something sugary or something bad. And that is directly related to the sleep deprivation. Not to mention the fact that you're gonna be dropping your testosterone levels and screwing up your IGF-1, your insulin's getting all messed up. There are so many things hormonally that go wrong with your sleep. Again, I'm not saying that physically you can't push through and do things, but long-term sleep deprivation is absolutely going to cause huge problems. So if you're choosing something like watching Netflix or your job or whatever the case may be over getting good nights of sleep, then you're probably making a huge massive mistake, not only in your training, but in your future health, heart health, life health, cancer health, all of it. These are all things that you guys can research. You can watch on every single other person's videos about sleep. Those aren't really important. All that is is a bunch of big words to say, if you don't get sleep, you're going to be a weaker, fatter, less performing version of yourself. 
is going to have a lot more problems like elbow tendonitis and overuse injuries that just start hurting all the time. It's just simply because you are not recovering because the biggest thing for recovery is sleep. So of course the next question is, what are some things that I can do to improve my sleep? And I'm gonna knock these out quick because again, you can find this anywhere. Now I am gonna go into a little bit more specific because you viewers, you guys follow me, especially those of you on Instagram who decide to participate in that poll, I try to make these things more specific towards you guys, but get ready. In order to practice proper sleep hygiene, hygiene is a disgusting word to me. Here's some things you're gonna to wanna to do. No screens, 30 minutes to one hour prior to bedtime, and if you are going to choose to use it, you can always get a blue light filter or switch on that setting or whatever it is. How well that works is questionable in my opinion, I don't really know. Uh, I still think you're taking things into your mind. I think you'd be better off just kind of chucking it. Make sure that your room is cold and dark. And when I say dark, I'm not talking about like you have your light on or a little charging light. Dark, everything dark. No caffeine, six to eight hours prior to bedtime. Now I know that seems drastic, but trust me, if you were drinking caffeine within eight hours, it is affecting your sleep. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't affect me, it does. You don't think it does because you drank so much caffeine that your receptors are kind of fried. Trust me, just thinking about how your brain works and how stimulants affect your body and your brain and your function and everything, you will sleep better and sounder, more sound, if you cut that caffeine out. I am not a stupid man and I know a lot of you have no choice but to work out post your job, whatever your occupation is. And for most of you, that ends up being in the afternoon or the evening. And so you end up taking pre-workout because you did not have a good night's sleep before, so you can't turn on mentally. You're trying to stick a Band-Aid on it by sticking more caffeine in your body so you can get up for this workout, but then you can't come back down before the end of the night and then it just restarts the cycle, all right? Trust me, if you get enough sleep, you do not need pre-workout. And then when you do use pre-workout, it will actually work the way it's supposed to work and get you for real amped up instead of like just trying to continue a hammer, 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 more and more scoops of that. So uh, we don't really know also what that is doing to us because it hasn't been around long enough. So I just be very, very careful with it. I have a couple friends who have had some health issues already from pre-workout, uh, not to mention the fact that since it's not really tested by the FDA, we don't know exactly what's in it. Meth, and I'm being dead serious, some pre-workouts have actually tested positive for meth. So if you wanna sleep better, no caffeine, eight hours prior to bedtime. Also a very good idea for your sleep is to set a bedtime and a wake time, and you stick to it all of the time, which means that whether you have your best friend's birthday party or whatever the case may be, you do your best to stick to the sleep schedule. And if you go off one day or two days or whatever the case may be, Every other day, you're on the sleep schedule, all right? It is very, very, very important. And if you do go off, you might wanna to try to make it up with naps. There are a lot of things you can kinda of do, but having a steady bedtime and a wake up time will do amazing things for your sleep because your circadian rhythm actually can work as a rhythm. Also avoid stressful things before you lay down to go to bed. Do not check your bank account. Do not get into a battle with your significant other. Do not watch a TV show that is going to get you amped up or stressed out or something like that. Those would all be negative to coming down to sleep. If you are up in the middle of the night looking at the clock, trying to do some stupid math going, if I fell asleep right now, I would get. That scrubs you. It is time to get out of bed, my friend. You are probably not going to sleep. You might as well go change your position, go change your environment, go try to do something that's exciting to you. Even go sit down and start watching a TV show that you want to watch. If you've ever noticed, it is so much harder to stay awake during something that you're interested in as opposed to something that you wish you could fall asleep through. Sometimes changing your environment helps and if you're getting frustrated laying in bed because you can't sleep, it is not gonna help the situation. Another thing that might help is if you exercised a little bit harder. I know a lot of you watching this do exercise, but putting forth a little bit more effort or maybe adding that conditioning, maybe if you're worried a little less about overtraining and you gave out your full effort, you would be exhausted enough that you would absolutely collapse in the bed. I'm not saying that as many of you, but that is some of you. Guilty. For a lot of people, myself included, which I'm going to get into later, it is all about reading, relaxing, or a coming down ritual, some sort of before bed ritual that just kind of brings your body and your mind and just your emotions, your soul, everything just starts to come down. So hopefully you can drift off into sleep. This helps so many people, but a lot of people do not do it. And I actually include my recovery in it. So I kill two birds with one stone. I actually do a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna talk about that here in just a little bit, but consider, building some sort of bedtime routine or habit that will just help you tell your body and your brain like, hey, it's bedtime, 
Like, let's, let's get going. Like, let's go to bed now. Just like puppies and babies. Some of you may need to get a little bit more sunshine every single day, especially this day and age. A lot of people spend a lot of time inside behind a computer and just getting out in the sunshine, get some vitamin D on your body, let your body realize like, oh wow, that's the sun. This isn't all about artificial light. Sometimes can do a lot for people. Taking a short walk at lunchtime, walking home, parking further away, just so you're in the sunshine, walking out to your car can do a lot to help a lot of people's number one mood but then number two, also their sleep. So don't stay away from sunshine. Another thing that's been very helpful to me is a noise machine or my phone has an app that I use that just plays kind of either rain music or train music or something that's just kind of repetitive, like a white noise, an ambient noise. So I'm not just freaking out over every single thing. With my background, my past, if like I hear a bump in the night, I am up, I'm moving, and then once I'm up and moving, my adrenaline's going and I am not going back to sleep. So having something that kind of blares out, even a fan that's just kind of going droning all the time can do a ton to help your sleep. If you're not taking advantage of that and you're someone like me who is a little bit more high strung, a little bit more wound up, uh, it might help you out to kind of have something that takes care of kind of your subconscious so you can just kind of drift off and not worry about every single little bump and noise in the night. Final thing of this section that I want to talk about, I know it's not popular, is alcohol use. Now I know a lot of people choose to drink alcohol and trust me, I have drank plenty of alcohol in my life. It's not really too much part of my life now, partially because I drank too much of it before and partially now because it gets in the way of my goals. Uh, but if you are using alcohol to either self-medicate or you do regularly drink alcohol, realize that there is a rebound effect. For many people, you drink alcohol, it makes you fall asleep. And that is wonderful because you think, great, I'm going to sleep. But then a lot of times it comes back up and almost has an energizing effect. And that's why a lot of people will pass out and then they'll wake up a couple hours later and just be wired in the middle of the night and then they'll fall back asleep and then wake up really junky for whatever they have going the next day. I would highly encourage you guys, not only for your training, not only for everything, to just look at your alcohol use and how you're choosing to use it. Not saying don't drink, absolutely. I'm, I'm not one of those people that tells people to not do anything. I think you should do whatever the heck makes you happy. However, if it is affecting your training, then again, you just can't complain about it. It's just like if you're gonna complain about sleep and you're unwilling to do something to better your situation, then you just lost all rights complain about it. Same thing with alcohol. If you are saying that your training isn't going the way it is, that is one of the biggest reasons why people hamstring themselves when they're in their younger ages is just because they spend too much time drinking and partying, which affects our sleep, it affects a lot of things, all right? So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying consider the use and how it affects your training if training is that big of a priority in your life. If it isn't, party away, my friend. Now for the second half of this video, I'm gonna to explain to you guys my sleep problems, what I have done to try to help it, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and then I'm also gonna tell you guys about what I'm currently doing as part of my bedtime routine so that hopefully you guys can adapt some things that will help you guys fall asleep just as well. Now, when I'm talking about my own personal sleep problems, they are very, very severe. So I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to brag, I'm not trying to minimalize someone else's, um, but I've been regularly told that my insomnia is some of the worst that doctors have ever seen. So my sleep problems actually started at a very young age due to some trauma that happened. Uh, I actually just talked about it in one of the lead FTS videos, the fighter mindset video. I talked about it a little bit in there, but I had some stuff happen to me as a kid uh, that made me not feel very safe at night. And then you combine that with the fact that my mom is very much a night owl. She regularly stays up to midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and my dad is very much a morning person because he goes to bed at like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, and if he's sleeping at like 4.30 a.m., it means he slept in, all right? So uh, as I was growing up, I always worked construction with my dad, and I would always get home from hanging out with my friends or whatever the case may be. My mom would still be up, so I'd hang out with my mom for a couple of hours till like, you know, midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock, and I didn't sleep well anyway, so it wasn't a big deal, and then I'd regularly wake up at four o'clock in the morning with my dad, work construction all day and then go do my gym stuff and then hang out with my friends and do it all again. That was my life. And that's really easy to do if you're a complete insomnia. I can only sleep three to four hours a night. However, it just continually got worse and worse. It got to the point where I could not even sleep in the same environment for more than like an hour, hour and a half. And this still is till today, uh, still keeps up. So I would go to bed in my physical bed and then an hour and a half later, I'd wake up, have to go sleep on the couch for about an hour and a half. And then I'd wake up from there, go back and sleep on the floor, and then the floor would go back to the bed, and the bed would go to the couch, and that continued on. Even when I was in college and I lived in an apartment with six other people, much to my roommate's chagrin, uh, I never slept in my room. I'd always be out in the futon when people got up in the morning trying to get ready for class or work or whatever they were doing, and uh, yeah, they would always be walking around me, sleeping on the floor, sleeping on random places, because uh, I just can't stay in the same environment. It's, it's 
it's a challenging thing. And then later in life, when I got involved in counterterrorism, that schedule was so erratic, right? It wasn't even like shift work. Shift work, a lot of times you need to work nights and then switches over daytime stuff. But this job, there was no regularity. So like one day you'd need to leave your house at like 4 a.m. And then the next day it would be like 6 p.m. And then you'd leave the country for like three days and you'd be back. And it'd be like a 2 p.m. time to leave for work. And then the next day it would be like 4 a.m. It was all screwed up, jumbled up like that. So trust me, that created a ton. Uh, it, it didn't create the sleep problems. It just made the sleep problems even worse. It just uh, made what I already had and just turned it into an absolute just chaotic, terrible, terrible time. And I got involved with sleep medications, both started out with like non-prescription. So I was taking things like melatonin is how it started. Melatonin turned it into like Tylenol PM or Benadryl or anything that had kind of that, that Benadryl type effect coming down, which then I got prescription sleep meds of Ambien, Lunesta, Belisara, other prescription sleep meds like Remron to try to bring down my mindset. Like. I was on so many different things and I would stack these things. It was nothing for me to literally take Ambien, Remron, Ambien CR, Lunesta, Bellasa, all on top of each other, plus Tylenol PM, plus things like dangerous, dangerous, dangerous levels of, of drugs that I had to take to even get like five hours of sleep uh, to the point that if like a normal person took that, it, you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't, right? Like literally people might not wake up type of stuff, but my tolerance, cause literally I was doing this for over a decade. It was like, I don't know, probably like 15, 16 years that I did sleeping pills every single day. And people are like, oh, isn't that addictive? And I'm like, look, man, like when you have real sleep problems, when you have like, I only sleep three hours a night, like you will do anything for relief. And once you were on sleep pills, you're like, the worst possible scenario is they take me off sleep pills and I go from five hours a night back to three hours a night. So it's like, it wasn't that big of a deal. I will say, however, now I am completely narcotic free as far as sleep stuff goes because those things mess with my mind so badly. The cognitive function that I lost because of that and just how fried my receptors are even now for like other drugs, like the amount of stuff that I need to take to feel a normal dosing effect is absolutely insane. And it's literally because I just hammered my body with stuff every single night to try to shut it down whatsoever. Now, of course, I've seen tons of specialists about this, and I've even had quite a few sleep studies done where in a combined total of the sleep studies, I've spent over 30 hours in a dark room with no TV on, no light, no nothing like that, where I slept a combined six minutes in a total of 30 hours of staying in bed. It actually got so bad at the last time for my last sleep study, the nurse actually walked in about three quarters through and they're like, hey, um, you're not gonna sleep, are you? And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, I feel great, like, let's go. And so they literally just told me to pack up my stuff and go home. So, um, yeah, I've tried literally everything that you could possibly try to do sleep. And uh, not much has helped. Currently, I'm working with a doctor, you guys know, that has gotten rid of my worm problem and is now treating me for my Lyme disease. And she actually wants to do a standard ganglion block. I don't know the first word. It's the same thing that a couple people have just talked about on Joe Rogan's podcast, and yes, for those of you that listen to that, Justin Ren and I do have the same exact parasite. But basically this is a block that they stick inside your neck and it's supposed to help with both like PTSD as well as some people with their sleep. So uh, that might be my next step, but I'm not sure if I want to take that route. So all of this say, I definitely have some serious sleep problems. Even to this day, I only sleep about three hours a night. Uh, and again, that is not by choice. That is because I get woken up by vomiting. That's why my voice sounds like this. So for this final part of the video, guys, what I thought I would do is just take you guys through my own bedtime ritual, show you guys exactly what I do because this has worked better for me than absolutely anything I've tried in the past. However, this is a sponsored video and the reason why I'm bringing it up right now is because it is sponsored by the Cove Commuter Portable uh, Speaker, which you guys have seen me talk about on the channel before. Uh, and the, you guys know that I don't promote things that I don't use. I am getting paid to talk about this, but I am not getting paid to say nice things, so everything I say about it is absolutely true. But the reason why I'm talking about it right now is because this is a part of every single step of my bedtime process, um, and I actually do use it literally every single day. I have like three or four of them in my house. One's in my bathroom for like when I'm taking showers, I listen to podcasts and all that kind of stuff, but it is part of every single step of this ritual. So as I go through, I'm just gonna tell you guys how I use it. If you guys are interested in picking one up, they are awesome. It gets an eight hour battery life, uh, completely portable, does awesome with Bluetooth, very, very durable. I am not easy on things and I beat many of these up pretty well and they also work perfectly fine. The battery life didn't go down. I read a couple of reviews that said that, but mine have not experienced that. So um, yeah, if you guys are interested, 
You guys can use the code BRIAN65 to save yourself 65%. But uh, yeah, all that information will be down in the description box down below. However, I will be bringing this up just throughout the next couple steps. All right, so the very first thing that I start doing when I'm coming down for bed is I start rolling out. I do this for a couple reasons. Now, I put an entire video up about the exact rolling routine that I do. Um, so if you guys wanna go check that out, that will be in the description box. However, I hit a lot of spots um, kind of around my shoulder blades my lats, my traps, because that's where I end up holding a lot of my stress. And rolling them out on a cross ball or even a, a smaller ball really does a lot to number one, alleviate some of the damage that I've done, up my recovery for my next workouts. But then number two, it also gets some endorphins kicking because it's super painful. But that means that while I'm rolling out, I'm kind of getting in a euphoric state. Also, I will either be listening on the speaker, I'll either be listening to a podcast or someone giving a talk or I might be watching something on a laptop, but it's all stuff that is just stuff that is coming down. I'm not trying to learn, I'm not trying to get excited, I'm not trying to get pumped up. It's literally just stuff that is just run of the mill, mediocre, Ken Burns, Civil War documentary type of stuff. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, I will roll out for as much time as I can possibly fit in because the more of it that I do, the better my workouts go, the better everything ends up going to include sleep. I think just because I have less tension, but immediately once I'm done rolling out, I go into 20 minutes of meditation, which is something new for me. I did a lot of meditation when I was in a martial arts as like a young man, uh, but then it's kind of gotten away from my life for probably like 20 years. And I just recently started adding it back in and it has been substantially awesome. And it has made a huge impact, not only in my sleep, but also in other areas of my life, but I'm going to do an entire video on that at a later time after I get a little bit more experience with it. But I will say that 20 minutes of meditation does a lot to help clear my mind, but also defragment. A lot of things are kind of bombarding me at that time. My night, like my whole day is kind of over and uh, I'm just thinking about the bad things, the good things, the interesting things, whatever is coming. And I'm able to just kind of take them, accept them, not good or bad, and just kind of let them go. You like let my brain kind of stick them where it wants to get rid of all the negative toxic stuff and kind of remember things that it wants to and just it, it's just a really good time for me. After that, I move into 10 minutes where I'm either reading or I'm praying or I'm doing meta, which is like loving kindness meditation. But that entire time there, that 10 minutes, is literally just me trying to be thankful and uh, thankful and grateful and just think about the people that are in my life that are so great and basically wishing that they didn't have any more sorrow, wishing that they didn't have any pain, wishing that things went well for them, that you know their problems would be solved, that there's anything I can do. Like, it's just pretty much trying to put 10 minutes of like good out there to like not only people I love, but just humanity. Like I really am, I, I, it starts out with the people I love, but then I just start feeling so overwhelmed. Like for those people, I'm like, man, I feel this way about everyone. Like at the end of my videos, when, when I tell you to go out and be nice to each other, like I'm dead serious, like I'm really, I want you to be nice to people. Like it, it, it has changed my life so much and uh, I, it really, it behooves you to be a happier, nicer person. Just that life goes easier for you. And for those of you interested, currently I'm using the Sam Harris Waking Up app, which I listen to on my speaker. But my wife and I actually time our nights that we both kind of do a similar coming down process and then we get together for dinner. And at that time we're just both in a really good, clear-headed mindset, which is really, really great for our relationship because we're not worried about a lot of the dumb stuff as much and we get to eat dinner, right? And typically that happens for me somewhere between 9 p.m. and honestly like 11 p.m. Somewhere in there is typically when I get to sit down and eat dinner uh, and I will eat as much food as I possibly can and I will eat until I fall asleep because this is my only meal of the day. It's typically the only food that I can hold down all day long if I eat food otherwise it ends up getting thrown up. So when I do get to eat, I eat as much as I can. It's not, it sounds disgusting, but it's not rare for me to like fall asleep literally with food in my mouth because I'm just trying to get calories, 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 calories. Um, at which time I fall asleep and then I wake up literally like three, four hours later at 3 a.m. Uh, throwing up. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that sucks, but for the hours that I am sleeping, I try to make them as quiet as possible because I have this thing kicking next to me and I use the Calm app and I either listen to like nighttime bedtime stories or just rain noise or train noise or something that's just kind of like ambient kind of going because again having background noise if it's silent my brain turns on and it starts rolling and typically the middle of the night is a dangerous time for my brain it's my negative thoughts just gross things uh, like i have panic attacks in the middle of the night like that's when my brain is the most vulnerable so if i can keep my subconscious a little covered just with something kind of going on um 
it really has done a lot to help me. Now, I know three to four hours of sleep to most of you seems very, very drastic, and everyone wants to know how I can get by doing it, but I will tell you guys, Everyone needs a different amount of sleep. Some people need nine, 10 hours a night. Some people need three or four hours a night. Most people need more than that. I actually need more than that. Um, it's just what I can get. However, people who have spent a lot of their life in sleep deprivation uh, treat it differently, see it differently, and kind of have learned how to get past a lot of stuff that people with regular sleep um, can't deal with. But I truly do think that is a choice because at the end of the day, the only two things you control are your attitude and your emotions. So if you were saying things like, oh man, I didn't have a good lift because I didn't get good sleep last night, or I'm super mean to people before I had my first cup of coffee, that's choice. That is you taking your own emotions and your own feelings and you plastering them on someone else or some other situation. Bottom line is, it's up to you, it's a choice. I would highly encourage you guys to really take an audit of how much sleep versus screen time you're taking or talking time or whatever it is that is taking up some of your time and really consider replacing some nonsense with some sleep and you'll be shocked at what it will do for your recovery, for your training, for your mental health, for your cognition. Everything will get better if you get a little bit more sleep. But hopefully this helps some of you out and you guys will be able to apply some of these things to your own training, your own life, your own bedtime rituals, whatever the case may be so you can get more sleep, you can recover. You can not only be better at lifting, but you can also be better in life. Special thanks to all the people over at Cove. Remember, if you guys do want one of these speakers, go down to the description down below. Use the code BRIAN65 to save yourselves 65%. Um, I just thank you guys so much for absolutely everything you're doing. I hope. I do, I really, really hope that you guys can get better sleep because it will make such a difference in your training. If I could get more sleep, I absolutely would. Uh, I'm doing absolutely everything I can to make that happen. I will catch you guys later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing in our lives, be nice to each other, people. I'm not kidding. Keep working hard. Totally, that was that. Ah, I'll see you guys then.